things and to Jesus be the glory and the honor and the praise and the power and dominion. Amen. Fantastic teaching today. This is going to really bless you. It's going to help you. It's going to strengthen you. You will love what the Bible has to say about how to overcome temptations. You know, I've been wanting to teach on this for a while. It's going to probably take me this whole week because we have to deal with what to do when temptations come our way. And the Bible has a lot to say about this. So make sure you tell your friends we're on live this wonderful week, this Monday. Today, Monday, is the last day in August. And uh, Chad's phone just rang over there. <laughs> but it's okay, it's okay. That's life, huh? And this is live, so anything happens. When you're live, you're live. Okay, I want to say my hellos. And I'm seeing myself twice there for some reason. Okay, there we go. Hello to Ruthlin and Evangelist Razak and Kevin Shitsukeni. And hello to Florina. And please share this with your friends. This is a most, a most important teaching on how to overcome temptations because we deal with that all the time, all of us, and what the Bible says about overcoming it and staying free. Hello to Lucas Castello. God bless you, my brother from Brazil. Hello to Lynette from South Africa. Hello to Sharon. Jesus be the glory, amen, I say. Isn't the Lord so wonderful? I mean, the Lord is just so precious, so precious. Oh, love my Redeemer, and I know you do too. Hello to Catalin, and hello to Simfansa. It says, uh, pray for my marriage. Lord, we pray today for Sim funds marriage that you'll give him a miracle in the name of Jesus with his home and his marriage for your glory. Amen. You know, I think maybe soon I will teach on how to have a happy marriage. I think that'll be a good one. What do you think, Chad? Yes, sir. Yeah. Absolutely. I think maybe I should teach on that. Hello to Danny and hello to Zunair. Hello to Agnes and Angelina. Thank you, all of you, for joining me today for this wonderful, most important teaching on how to overcome temptation. Let's just pray. Wonderful Lord, I thank you, and I bless your holy name that your word has given us the answers for this question. So now, Lord, speak to us. Make it so clear, so simple, and life-changing. Thank you, Lord, again for your love, your grace, your beauty, your kindness, and your mercy. We love you with all of our hearts. What would we do without you? You are the life of our hearts and the love of our life. We give you the praise, sweetest Jesus. Minister to your people now, Lord, and strengthen your sweet people. Amen. All right, so I want to deal with how to overcome temptation, and I want to Begin by having you think about three areas in your life where you experience temptations in. Just think right now about three areas in your life where, in which you experience temptations. And once you have these three in your mind, uh, I'm going to ask you another question. Of the three temptations, <clears throat> which one has the strongest appeal? Which one is the most intense? So think about right now, I, I want everyone to think about just three temptations that you fight. And then think, 
which one is the strongest? Which one is the most intense? And then, and then I want you to, 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 to think about your response to what I just asked you to do. So, three temptations, which one is the worst? Now, I'm going to ask you um, to think about this. What is your response? In other words, would you say, like when the temptation comes, do you say, oh, it's the same old thing, I'm, I might as well give in. Or do you say, I'm trying to overcome it. Or do you say, well, I think this is bondage and I don't know what to do about it. So, so you know, I'm, I'm, I'm having you think about the three temptations. Many of us have way more than that. But let's just think about the top three of, in our life that we're tempted with. And let's think about the worst one, the most intense one. And then let's ask ourselves, what do we say? What's our response when temptations come? Do we say, oh, it's the same old thing. I might as well give in. Or do we say, I, I'm, I'm going to try and kill this thing. I'm going to try and overcome it. Or do we say, oh, I'm in bondage. I don't know what to do. Well, this is something we deal with. But let me ask you something else. When the temptation comes, who do you blame? Do you blame your past? Do you blame other people? Do you blame the way you were brought up? Uh, do, you blame, do you blame your mom and dad? Do you blame your family? Do you blame uh, weaknesses in your life? Or do you blame circumstances? Or maybe do you blame God? I still remember a preacher who could not overcome a temptation with women. And when I asked him about it, he blamed his uh, childhood. He blamed his past. And then he blamed the fact that he was molested as a child, which means he blamed people. So when temptations come, people usually blame something. Well, I'm tempted because, you know, of the way I was brought up, or I'm tempted because of my past, or I'm tempted because of my family, or I'm tempted because I am just weak or circumstances. But you know what? It's so sad. A lot of people blame God for, the te for their temptations. Now, let's begin with this because this is so important that we understand what does the Bible say about that one thing I just said when people blame God. So in James 1, verse 1 and 2, it says, James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ to the 12 tribes which are scattered abroad, greetings. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptation. Now this is an, an, an interesting beginning of the book. Knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. Now here we are told that um, Temptation is a universal problem. So that's the first thing we have to understand. So let's not blame this and this and that and people. Let's understand it's a universal problem. And um, we all face it. And we will continue to face it until the Lord returns. So it's not good to blame people. It's not good to blame this and that. It just, let's understand first of all, it's a universal problem. We're going to face it. 
but we're going to face it till the Lord comes. So James says, my brethren, verse 2, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith works patience. Yes, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to deal with how to overcome, but let me just read this. But let patience have her perfect work, that ye may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. If any of you lack wisdom and you don't know what's causing it, let him ask of God that gives to all men liberally and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. Now, um, the reason many people blame God when it comes, not realizing it's a universal problem that we are to deal with uh, through the word. Well, you really, I mean, you can't have joy, to be honest with you, until you know how to overcome it. That's what, what James is saying here is, you know, well, don't rejoice because you're tempted. Rejoice because you're going to overcome this thing. Aha. You're going to rejoice because you're going to see what he says later. How do I overcome temptation? Well, once I know I'm going to rejoice, I'm not going to rejoice when I don't know how. <laughs> but, but I want to deal with, you know, slowly, one thing at a time. Why do people blame God? Because a lot of people blame God. Because that's what happened with Adam. Adam blamed God. Adam never took full responsibility when, when he was tempted, remember? When, when his wife came and said, here, you know, eat it. He was, basically what Adam did, he never took responsibility. He was saying, uh, Lord, you, you've given me a, this wife. Uh, had you give, given me someone different, maybe I wouldn't have been tempted. Had you given me some, uh, some stronger woman, I wouldn't have done it. But you gave me this lady that has no discernment. <laughs> And I would, I would not be in this mess if it wasn't that this lady is the one that got, that got me all in this mess. But he blamed God for giving him a wife who, who was weak and, not, and had no discernment, really. Because when, when he said, well, it's the wife you gave me, it's the wife you gave me, he was blaming God and also saying, well, Lord, you just gave me the wrong person. She, she didn't do the right thing. She didn't have discernment. She's weak and so forth. So it's easy to blame God, but really that's not the right answer. So temptations, trials. Now verse 2, my brother, and this is James 1, 2. Count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations. That word temptations in this, word, in this uh, portion is the Greek parasmas. Parasmas means enticement. Uh, which has destruction as its goal. And in verse 3 he says, knowing this, that the trying of your faith, or the testing, that's what the word trying means, the Greek word dakimas, the, the testing of your faith. Now, uh, the th next thing we read, but let patience have her perfect work, that ye may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing, or complete, wanting nothing. Now, let's look at verse 12, and here's what it says, 12 and 13. Because this is the first thing that will help us overcome, is when we realize, number one, it says, Blessed is the man that endureth temptations, for when he stride, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. Let no man say when he is tempted, I'm tempted of God. Can I blame God? For God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempteth he any man. He'll test you, but he will not tempt you. Now, the problem is, verse 14 says, but every man is tempted when he's drawn away. When he's drawn away from the Lord. That's the problem. 
He's drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Then when lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin. And sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. So the Bible is very clear. God does not tempt us. God will test us. In Genesis 22, uh, 1 and 2, God tested Abraham. Uh, God would not cause, uh, God would not do, I should say, anything that will cause us to sin because it's against his nature. It's against his purpose. Um, so, but let's ask here, why does God test us? What's the reason for testing? In Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 10, we have the answer. It says, for they verily, for if, that's our parents, for they verily, for a few days chastened us after their own pleasure. But God will test us for our own profit, that we might be partakers of his holiness. So God doesn't tempt us because, like I said, that's against his nature. God will do nothing that would cause you and I to sin. Uh, it's against his purpose. It's against his nature. God will test us. Why will God test us? It says in verse 10, that we might be partakers of his holiness. So that's why, that's why James, let's go back to the book of James again, the epistle of James, chapter one, and we're gonna read verse one, uh, sorry, we're gonna read verse 13 this time again. Let no man say when he's tempted, I'm tempted of God, for God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempteth he any man. So that that's, that's, out of the question, so put that aside. Never blame God because he has nothing to do with it. Now, God, the Son, Jesus, when he became flesh, he was tempted. Uh, Hebrews 4.15, it says he was tempted in all points. The devil tempted his humanity. So, when the Lord Jesus resisted, and he did, and he never gave up, he never gave in, I should say. Think about, think about this. The Son of God, the devil tempted the humanity of the Son of God. The Son of God resisted, never gave in, Think about the intensity and the pressure that he felt that we will never feel. Because, 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 um, ah, I, wanted, I want to say something so powerful that is so, and I don't know that you're going to get this, but I'll say it slowly. Jesus felt what we are incapable of feeling when he was tempted. He took all that hell could throw upon him without sinning. Not even one evil thought entered into his mind. Pure holiness. Jesus is pure holiness. And pure sin came against pure holiness. Think about the pressure. Think about the intensity of that pressure when Satan tempted his humanity 
Jesus knew no sin in his humanity. Jesus was pure holiness in his humanity. The Lord resisted. He never gave in. Think about the intensity he felt as pure holiness. When you and I are tempted, we're not pure holiness. We already are accustomed to the flesh and sin and the way sin works. We were conceived in sin. So when, when we were tempted and, we, and when we are tempted, there isn't the intensity. Jesus never failed. Jesus resisted unto the end. The problem is we do not resist. That's why we fail. If pure holiness can resist, if pure holiness never gave in to sin, if pure holiness never failed, and be that his pure holiness, imagine the intensity of that temptation. Because there's no intensity where there's no pure holiness. This is a little deep for some of you, I know. But just think about this. If, 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 if you were, just think about this. If you had never sinned in your life and sin came like that, think about what I'm talking about. But all of us had, have sinned. We've all come short of the glory of, of God. We have all been conceived in sin. Meaning when we were tempted, there wasn't the resistance. There wasn't the pressure. Because we'd been accustomed to it. Jesus, pure holiness, resisted, resisted against sin. When someone says, Jesus never felt what I feel, my, my answer is, uh, he felt what you and I are incapable of feeling. He was tempted in all points, yet without sin. He took upon himself all that the enemy could throw upon him, yet without sinning, not even one evil thought entered his mind. Now that's pressure. So how do I overcome then? Let's read Hebrews chapter 12. And let's begin discussing it. Hebrews 12 is powerful. And beginning at verse 1, here's what it says. Wherefore seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. Let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us. In other words, let's run away from it. Let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, this is the key, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him that, that endured such hostility of sinners against himself, lest ye be wearied and faint in your mind. Now here's the verse. For ye have not yet resisted unto blood, striving against sin. That's what I mean by intensity. The intensity of the temptations was so great that in Gethsemane, his sweat became blood. Did you ever have that happen to you? Nope. Which means we don't even know what intensity is. And if Jesus overcame the intensity, we can overcome anything with him. Hallelujah. Did you hear that, Chad? Yes. If Jesus overcame intensity, we're not, in, we're not even capable of, of understanding. If he overcame what it says here in verse 4, ye have not 
yet resisted unto blood. Unto blood means unto bloodshed. Striving against sin. He did. The sweat became blood as he resisted. Have you ever resisted like that where the blood, where the sweat became blood? No. And if Jesus won, you will win. But what must you do to win? Looking unto Jesus. You can't lay every sin. You know, when, when it says in verse 1, you know, lay the sin, lay aside every weight and every sin that so easily grabs you and traps you. And the word beset, by the way, is a very interesting word. Ensnare you, wrap itself around you. So how do I lay that sin aside? Verse 2, looking out to Jesus. He's the answer, people. He's the answer, sweet people of God. He's the answer, man of God. He's the answer, child of God. Jesus is the answer, beloved of the Lord. And I'm calling you beloved because you are. Looking unto Jesus. Now, what, what is temptation? I'm, I'm going to continue dealing with how to overcome. But let's just talk about what is it? Well, temptation is to entice, to entice us to do evil against the Lord. Now, let's look at something very interesting. Let's look at the three forms of temptation mentioned in the Bible. First John. Let's go to First John chapter 2, verse 16. For all that is in, for all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. These are the three headlines of temptations. When we are tempted, we have to understand there are three forms. Number one, for all that's in the world, the lust of the flesh, that's the big headline. The lust of the eyes, that's the second big headline and the pride of life. That's the third big headline. So when we talk about temptation, we mean the loss of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. Now, let me warn you. If anyone goes into enemy territory, if they wander into enemy territory, uh, they're liable to be taken prisoners Anyone who goes into that uh, lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life into those territories, he most likely will become a prisoner of those areas. Because the Bible is very, very clear. So let's go back to James 1. And we're going to read again, we're going to read again verse 14. James 1 you know, I, this is a very delicate matter, so we can't rush. It says in verse 14, but every man is tempted when he's drawn away of his own lust for the lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, the pride of life. He starts or she starts to wander into that demonic territory and they will be most likely taken prisoners because the Bible says every man is tempted when he's drawn away, when he starts to walk into areas that he should not be in. He should not go to. So, this says the responsibility is ours. You and I are responsible because it says we're tempted when we're drawn away, when we wander into territory we're not supposed to be in. Now, remember, remember, the three territories. Okay, Chad, what are the three territories, please? The lust of what? No, the lust of the flesh. 
and then the lust of the eyes and the pride of life. So we have to understand when we, when we wander into this territory of where the flesh is active, the lust of the flesh, we're caught. Or the lust of the eyes, ooh, I want to look, we're caught. A man was walking in New York, he looked into a store, he saw pictures of naked women, and a demon said, go look again. He looked again, go look again, he looked again, he was caught. I know that man personally. And I asked him, how could you do it? He said, well, he said, I was walking down the street in New York. I saw pictures of naked women. I, I heard a voice as I'm walking, go look. And he went to look. He was drawn. He went into the wrong territory. He went into some street where he saw a lot of stores with all this filth. So people are tempted when they're drawn away, when they're pulled into those territories. So my, my answer to you is don't go there. <laughs> don't just don't go there. Don't wander into enemy territory because if you wander into enemy territory, I promise you, you will be a prisoner. It's very likely you'll be a prisoner. It says everyone is tempted when he's drawn away, when he starts walking into territories he's not supposed to be in. Where, where the flesh is very much alive and the, you know, lust of the eyes is all over the place and the pride of life is everywhere. We have to stay away from those three areas. I'll explain them. It's important we don't rush because you're dealing with this every single day of your life and so am I, okay? So we have to do what the Bible says. Number one, look unto Jesus and number two, don't go there. Don't go there. So, when the enemy sends a thought our way, we as believers have the power to let it go by or to lock in on it and entertain it. So when Satan begins to tempt you, he will send a thought your way, like that guy walking in, you know, walking by that store and a thought hits him, oh, I want to go look back. The devil will send a thought your way. You as a believer, you have to understand this, you have the power to let it go by, in other words, ignore it, let it go by you, or lock in on it and entertain it. And when you entertain it, you begin to fantasize. And the second you fantasize, bondage will set in. The second you entertain it, you begin to fantasize. I, I talked to a man one day. I said, oh, um, I see you don't have an iPad. I'd like to buy one. Oh, no, he says, I don't want one. So what? He said, I don't want one. He said, I bought an iPad and I had to destroy it because the devil was using it to tempt me. Oh, something, huh? Because the devil is, 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 will use any means when he sees a weakness. He said, no, he said, I don't want you to buy an, an iPad. He said, he said I, have, I have the money, first of all, so I don't need you to buy one for me. And number two, I will never get one because I bought one and had to destroy it. So when people begin to entertain, and some of them don't have the strength, you know, sadly, to, to, to say no, when the enemy sends that thought, you have the power to say, no, I don't want it. Let it go. But if you're weak, you're going to lock in on it. You're going to entertain it. When you begin to entertain, you begin to fantasize. And when people f fantasize, that's where the bondage sets in. So we, we cannot blame God. No. It, because it says in verse 15 of James 1, Then when lust hath conceived, huh? that's when uh, they begin to fantasize, it brings forth sin. And sin, when it's finished, brings forth death. So, <clears throat> number one, you have to Take responsibility, repent, 
because it says in verse 16, do not err, my beloved brethren. Every good gift, every perfect gift is from above and comes down from the Father of lights, with whom is no variable, variableness, neither shadow of turning. Now, we must know we are responsible for our temptations. And when we take that responsibility, then a way of escape comes our way. Please hear this. Everyone likes to repeat 1 Corinthians, but the Bible is clear. You have to put both James and Corinthians together. I was watching um, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. I was watching a, uh, a crusade one day of another minister of the gospel, not my crusade, it's on TV. And he had someone come up who talked about uh, how he was tempted. He was giving his testimony. And uh, he read this uh, verse from 1 Corinthians on how God will make a way for him to escape it. Well, it says in 1 Corinthians 10, 13, There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. It's a universal problem. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you're able, but will, with the temptation, also make a way to escape, that ye may be able to bear it but the guy never never give the full picture because God will not give us a way to escape till first we must know that we are responsible for our temptations and when we take responsibility then God gives us a way out not before that because it says in James 1 we are tempted what when we are drawn away when we, are, when we go into territory, we're not supposed to be there. And the second we say, Lord, I take responsibility. I'm sorry I even looked. I'm sorry I even went. I'm sorry I even entertained. At that moment, God will give us a way out. And not before that. So when they use this scripture, no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man, and God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted. Hold it. He'll not suffer you to be tempted when you say, Father, I'm to blame, not you. I'm responsible, not you. But most people blame God. They say, well, you know, God made me the way I am, and, you know, all that stuff. All right. Ah. <sighs> How does the Bible tell us to do that? I'm going to close with this. We're going to continue tomorrow because there's a lot I'm going to talk about. Jesus said, pray that ye enter not into temptation. Pray that ye enter not into temptation. The second I take responsibility... Then I pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, I don't want to go there again. Please give me that ability. At that moment when I pray, God will make a way for me to escape it. So it's not just, well, no temptation has taken you, but such is coming to man, and God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above what you're able, and with that temptation, he'll make a way. So, oh, God's going to use that temptation to get me out. Whoa, whoa, hold it. No. You have to take responsibility and pray. And the second you pray, God will turn the whole thing around for you. Right when you're tempted and think you're about to collapse. Father, I take responsibility. I should, not have, I should not have done this. I shouldn't have looked. I shouldn't have entertained. And Lord, in Jesus' name, and the second you pray, Jesus said in Luke 22, 46, pray and you'll not enter into temptation. Oh, that's the way out then, isn't it? The way out is when you take responsibility and pray. Whoa. Are you enjoying that, Chatty? Yes, sir. Yeah. Tomorrow, I'm going to deal with... Uh, Another matter. So I'm going to deal with the strength of temptations.
tomorrow. How to overcome the strength of temptations. Because all of us face temptations in our life and sometimes they come in very intense forms and very different fashions. So we, we, we're going to talk about tomorrow how to overcome the strength that comes with some temptations. Because not all temptations are strong. Because when they come, they come in different forms with different levels of strength. That's for tomorrow. Don't miss it. I'm going to have so much to say tomorrow. Uh, I'm going to talk about what the Bible says about the devil. I'm going to talk about the way he approached Eve, because that's the way he'll approach you. Um, I'm going to talk about how he challenged the Word of God. I'm going to talk about how he questioned the office of God's Word, how he challenged the accuracy of God's Word. I'm going to talk about so much yesterday, but every one of these things has an answer. And you will see it tomorrow. I promise you this. If you stay with me every day, you will become victorious over temptation. But you can't just, you know, miss one day. You have to be with me tomorrow. Because I have so much to talk about. And I just began today. I just began today. I'm going to deal with physical desires. I'm going to talk about mental desires. I want to talk about emotional desires. So much that is in the Bible and how to deal with that and much more. Today I just began really. Tomorrow I'm going to talk about the different intensities, the strengths of some and the ones that are not as strong, how to deal with all that and show you how the devil works and see and, and show you and, and you'll see how to be victorious. I promise you that. It's in the Word. Come on, stretch your hands towards me. Let's believe God because God is going to use this teaching to make you an overcomer. You will overcome in Jesus' mighty name. Father, in Jesus' name, I come into agreement with everyone listening, everyone watching, everyone paying attention. That you will show them through your word how to overcome temptation and remain free, Lord. For you gave us the answer in your word. And you told us it's possible. And once we see the answer, then we can rejoice like James 1 declares. Joy over temptation, Lord. We cannot rejoice when we don't have the answer. Give us the answer that we can rejoice in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. And Lord, like I'm, 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 I'm not done praying yet. I want to pray for your finances. And Lord, bless your people financially. Prosper them beyond what they can even believe for. Your word declares that you, that you are magnified when we prosper. You rejoice when we prosper. Your word says, I wish above all things that you prosper. Now, Lord, let prosperity come to every one of them. Let financial blessings come to every one of them. In the mighty name of Jesus, we declare your promises. For you declared, it shall be given unto you good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over with men, give to your bosom. You said, if we honor you, you will honor us. If you said in your word, I've not seen the righteous forsaken or receive begging bread. You said in your word, Lord, that you'll give us the wealth of the sinner. We trust you. We bless you. We glorify your holy name, Jesus. Amen. Now, all these promises I just mentioned are conditional on giving. You have to obey the Lord. If we obey and serve him, Job 36, 11. If we obey and serve him, we will spend our days in prosperity and our years in pleasure only when we obey and serve him. You can give right now to the Lord's work. Benny Ministries, you can go online. You can do it on the platform you're watching me on by just pushing the donate button. 
or you can text it bhm45777 it's on the screen for you bhm45777 don't miss tomorrow you can't i'm telling you life-changing teaching this whole week love you much and i'll see many of you that belong to bhi later in the day at 3 p.m and i want to say something bhi be before you go you know i have a lot of deep teachings that i will not share with the whole world they only belong to bhi they only belong to those students who are a part of benhin institute so you really need to join benhin institute if you're hungry for meat real meat you know what i'm giving you here really is good milk okay good milk like heavy milk you know there's different kinds of milk the skim milk and two percent milk and half and half milk and then you got the real 100 percent milk this is what i give to everybody but if you want meat like filet mignon stuff bhi is what i give it at benin institute and that's why I many have joined and it's the numbers are growing and you would do your, yourself a favor joining Benin Institute. Look us up. You'll be blessed. Love you. Shalom.